Well, Transy was founded in 1780, and by 1799 we had a medical school, which operated for 60 years. Um, so our last graduate finished in 1859. And then the Civil War came along and all of these artifacts were put away in storage. Um, some of them were kept in our medical school building, which burned during the war. And we actually had students and faculty rush into the flames and rescue a lot of these artifacts. Um, so they have a, a great history. Um, after the war, they were put away in storage again and not discovered till roughly the, 18, the 1920s. And by that time they were antique and they were recognized for their historic value as well as their scientific value. Correct formal education you could get from Transy would be two years of study. And they did have summer breaks, but, uh, and they were fairly short semesters. But they would study for a total of two years with our faculty, and they would study anatomy, surgery, materia medica, which is basically pharmacy, obstetrics, uh, sort of the basic things that we study today, but with different titles. But it was possible if you had been practicing kind of as an understudy that you could get some credit for work that you had done in the past. But we know that other people claimed that they, they had a transient degree and people probably just didn't check if you were a doctor in the wilderness or, the, or some rough area in Kentucky and said you went to Transylvania and you were dressed right, people probably believed you. We were the third medical school in the country and at times we were as well equipped as any school in the country. It was always a problem that there were people in the country, even in the city, who were practicing medicine who didn't really know what they were doing. And also pharmacy was a very unregulated thing at the time. So people could make up their own medicines with all kinds of horrible compounds in them and sell them from the back of a wagon, make a lot of money and then skip town, for example, or practice as a physician in a small rural community and really have no training. And as long as you were just treating colds and delivering babies, if you had experience with that, it would be okay. But if a serious disease came along or an epidemic, then there could be big trouble. If you practice medicine for at least 10 years, you could be grandfathered in. I guess the assumption being if you had lasted a decade as a doctor, you probably knew enough about what you were doing to continue. If you got caught and if your community complained, then you would be tried. You could be sentenced up to 30 days in prison. You could be fined $100, which was a decent chunk of money back then. Even for quack physicians, that was a lot of money. If you were decent at what you did, most communities didn't complain. So th this act was set up to protect the community from and the whole state of Kentucky from charlatans and quacks. And to ensure the, that it was successful, the governor appointed a commission of five physicians who would interview doctors, quiz them on things like anatomy, physiology, and so forth. And they ultimately had the decision of whether this person should practice or not.